Hi everybody, this is Matt coming at you with another Bitcoin video. This time we're going to talk about BIP38 encryption, which is a really nice way to encrypt your Bitcoin address so that if someone finds it written down in your, your little safe in your house or something, uh, they can't just immediately spend it. Because right now, if you write down your private key on a piece of paper or you print out this whole page here that has, can it contains your private key, uh, that's the keys to the kingdom. Anyone who gets this number is has got your coins. So. Uh, this is you we got to come up with something better and my workaround before bit 38 was really uh, on the scene I, um, I hadn't heard of it at the time. I made my first video was to paste uh, to copy and paste this private key into a um, uh, a text file and then encrypt the text file with some sort of encryption program. I actually used a compression program, 7-zip, but it had AES built into it, so I would then use that with a password. And I now had an encrypted compressed file. Uh, and that's, that's, that's pretty good, except for the fact that AES encryption, which pretty much everybody uses now, uh, is extremely secure, except it's also extremely fast. And what that means is you now have an issue where someone could tr who has your file, let's say they've taken it from your safe, your USB key or whatever, they can then take that file and try a password and throw it at the AES decrypt function and, and try to decrypt the file. If it doesn't work, they could try another uh, attempt, another password, and so on and so forth. And because AES is so fast, they can guess very quickly. And so, of course, you automate this with a computer program, and you can guess billions of times a second. So that's the problem. The other problem is it's sort of an arbitrary encryption. It's not a standard. You know, if you were to give that file to somebody else because they bought your coins or whatever, uh, you'd have to explain the process that you used to decrypt it and they'd have to know what to do. Um, so we needed a more standard way to encrypt a secret key. And wouldn't it be nice if we could also have a way that this encryption process used slows down the attack so that brute force becomes impractical. And that is what BIP38 is all about. BIP38, BIP stands for Bitcoin Improvement Proposal. So if, uh, if you have a certain idea to make Bitcoin better, you can come up with an idea, you can type it out. And this is very professional looking, abstraction, motivation, all this stuff. Uh, and uh, people talk about it, and if they accept it, they'll start using it. So BIP38 actually really has two different use cases. The first is very simple. You take your private key from your address, and you encrypt it, and now it takes a password to unlock it. Uh, similar to what we were doing before with an encrypted zip file, um, but a little, little better as we'll talk about. The other uh, use case, by the way, just so uh, you know about it, is the idea of being able to have someone else generate keys for you on the fly, but that they can't spend from which until now I don't think it was really possible. So that's kind of nice. Uh, one example they give here is if you buy a physical Bitcoin, you know those shiny ones they keep showing on the news or whatever um, that have holograms on it. Well, those ones that you buy have private keys printed on them, which means that the person who made the coin knows the private key to spend the money on there. And then, of course, they promise not to do it, but uh, that's not exactly ideal for someone else to know your password, your private key, that is, I should say. So having BIP38 and using it in the method to, uh, for them to be able to make as many addresses that you control and they don't, uh, that's kind of cool. But we're not going to talk about that. That's a little more unusual. We'll talk about the more uh, uh, likely scenario for you, which is just encrypting your private key so that only you can decrypt it. Uh, just real quick, they, he uses the con they, we still use AES-256 to encrypt and to decrypt, <clears throat> but the, the thing about it, though, is that script is now used to actually generate the key that AES-256 uses to encrypt or decrypt. So script can, is a neat little function that's actually used in Litecoin during the hashing algorithm. Uh, that is a little harder to make uh, hardware for to brute force with. AES or SHA-256, these are all designed to be fast, so it's not hard to make ASICs or any you know specific hardware to speed up the process of using them. Script requires a lot of memory and a lot of other things that uh, is a lot harder to brute force. And essentially, they, uh, depending on the parameters that you use, you can make it a very long time for the computer to jump through a lot of hoops before it can finally give the key to the AES function to decrypt it. So that's what was done. Uh, and we'll show a little example of that. 
So the first example I'm going to show is bitaddress.org, the latest version of it. And again, we, you know, we're making addresses here, and you'll notice the addresses again, of course, are uh, wide open. You know, if anyone who has this knows what uh, can use it to uh, decrypt your uh, or spend your money. So the only Bit38 function I know of in bitaddress.org is to go to Paper Wallet. Let's turn off Hide All, Hide Art, and I'm going to turn on Beat. I'm going to activate the Bit38 encrypt, and I've already typed in the password hello. And watch what happens. I'm going to say generate. And it runs through the script algorithm, does all these jumpy jacks to finally come up with a password. I thought I said hide art. Whatever. Anyway, we'll do it one more time. Oops, it's nine. <laughs> ah, I'm going to reload the page. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paper wallet. Hide the art. Bit38. Hello. Generate. Okay, we should get what we want now. There we go. So now you get private keys that look a little bit different. Instead of starting with uh, 5J, we they start with 6P every time. A lot of times they start they have an F and X, but that's not guaranteed. So 6P uh, is part of the spec of uh, Bit 38, saying that in order to identify a key that's encrypted, you're always going to start with 6P, and then um, that tells whoever you're typing it into what kind of key it is. In this case, a Bit 38 encrypted key. So now let's take this key, and right now you can't spend with it because it is encrypted. So what you can do is go to Wallet Details, paste it in there to learn about it, and view the details, and the bit address sees that there's a 6P in front, so it automatically gives you a box to fill in the password. We'll do hello. Actually, let, let's screw it up. We'll try to decrypt it without doing the right password. Do you see what happens? It has to run that password through the, the, uh, the script algorithm, and it said, nope, that's wrong. So we say, okay. I will do it correctly. So those extra couple seconds really add up for brute forcing. I mean, it just essentially means brute forcing is practically impossible. That worked. Here's our private key. Uh, 5HXVEA. Uh, where do we start it from? Oh, we actually don't know. <laughs> Part of making an encrypted address from scratch means you don't really even know what the private key was. And that's what's kind of unfortunate about bit address is that it only lets you create bit 38 stuff if it makes the private key in the background. So you cannot provide the private key for encryption, which I didn't want wasn't good enough for me. I have a couple cold address cold storage addresses that I didn't want to have to go to a new address. I uh, didn't want to have to send the coins there. It's just a hassle. I'd rather just encrypt my existing address. So what do you do? Well, thankfully, there's another website, bit2factor.org, which can do this. They actually all uh, have the other side of Bit38 as well, which is the uh, two-factor, two-party thing. But you can use the uh, simple part here, the encrypted private keys. I'm going to take a private address. Let's use this one. And I'm going to type it here. That's our private. Actually, you know what? Just not to confuse things, I'll just start with a single wallet. This is our regular private address. Paste it in here. Type in, type in a password, and then say generate and encrypt the private key. Key. And it's going to give us two pieces of information. The first one is just going to say, by the way, here's what your Bitcoin address is for that. That's nothing to do with Bit38, but it's just letting you know because it's nice to have that. You write that down. Uh, and here is the encrypted key. So if you want to decrypt it, we can right click and copy and go to decrypt private key. I'm going to enter it here and again type in hello and say decrypt. And again we have to go through all that number crunching so it takes some time, which is good. And here we are. So 5J, uh, it's hard to see. We start with 5JNT we ended with 5JNT, so we got back what we started with. So that's the way to do it. I would just use bit2factor.org. I would use this offline, load this web page in your computer, turn off Wi-Fi, do this, uh, and I, ideally you do it on a live CD so there's no virus recording screenshots and somehow getting it back. You just do a live CD with no hard drive, load this, boot bit2factor.org, turn off your Wi-Fi, type in your encrypted private key, come up with a password, and then come up, get your... Uh, Excuse me, we're at the decrypt side. Type in your private key to your password, get out the encrypted key, write that down, and I highly recommend that you have someone or yourself write down the encrypted, uh, you know, you've written it on a piece of paper, let's say. Go ahead and type it out again here, 
and do your passphrase, make sure that it works because that means you wrote down the key correctly on your piece of paper. So by reading it back off the piece of paper and decrypting it, you're checking that you wrote it down correctly because the worst thing in the world would be to write down the key incorrectly because of course that means you've just lost your keys provided you've gotten rid of all the other information. So make sure you go through a check process and then once you've done that, then you can get rid of your private key. And that's what I've done and I've checked a few times. I even woke up in the middle of the night one time and go, did I really write down right? <laughs> I, I'm just a little obsessed that way. Went down, tried it out, sure enough it works. So anyway, uh, I really recommend this. Keep your coins safe. This is a good way to do it. And I will talk to you next time.